Today, we're going to be checking out editor.js. Before we begin, I wanted to mention this video sponsor, Skillshare.com, which is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. So whether you want to fuel your curiosity, your creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to do just that. For instance, you're about to watch my tutorial on a JavaScript tool, but you could watch this full JavaScript course at Skillshare. Skillshare is also super affordable with an annual subscription of being less than 10 bucks a month. But if you're one of the first 500 people to click on the link here in the description in YouTube, YouTube, then you get the first two months 100% free. So join up. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetra.com. So today we're going to be checking out something that's been making waves lately, and that is Editor.js. And you can find this over at Editor.js.io. So as you can see, it touts itself as being a next generation block styled editor. All right. So uh, it gives you an, an actual preview of it right here where you can use this block style editor. And it has a lot of different features. And one of the most interesting things is that it generates what's called clean data. And you'll see this, uh, we'll get this going in our own project, where this is the actually what you would be saving in your back end for your, your content management system or for your, for your articles or whatever. And then you output it however you wish to um, HTML. All right, so before we begin, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure you create a new folder, which I already did, um, called Editor. And inside of it, we're going to use um, Node Package Manager, um, which is from Node.js. If you don't have that installed, go to Node.js.org, download, install everything on the default settings, reload your console, your command line, and then we can run the following command, npm init hyphen y flag, for just to answer yes to all the prompts. And that creates a package.json file in our editor folder. And now we can run the install command here for our editor editor.js.io at the getting started page to install editor.js. So as you can see, this is just coming straight from the um, getting started installation page. We're choosing to do this option right here to install editor.js.io. Of course, you can also load it from a CDN um, in manually as well, just to copy the, the contents of an editor.js file. Um, but we're just going to do it this way. And I'm going to right click here just to paste that. And we'll let this install. Okay, so now at this point, we're going to go to code period, and that will open up Visual Studio Code, which I already have installed. It's a free code editor from Microsoft, and it is quite popular. It's what I use. And we're going to create an index.html file. All right, and I'm going to hit ex uh, exclamation point enter just for some quick boilerplate. We're going to get a CSS folder here and also a main.sass file. So you're going to need um, two extensions um, for this and also for, actually, we're not going to use library load. I'm sorry. Only just one for this tutorial. And that is the SAS uh, extension. So just type in uh, SCSS and which, let me see here. SAS, there we go. Uh, I have this one installed right here. And then you can just install it and it'll reload. And we'll link that up. And we'll just go to CSS main.css file. We'll save this. This one, we're going to click watch SAS. So it's, that's live SAS compilation. I think I, I gave you the wrong one. So if I type in live, uh, let's see. Yes, live SAS compiler. That's the one that you want. Sorry about that. I'm not thinking straight. It just woke up. All right. So I let's go back to our index.html. And before we get into any JavaScript, let's get uh, just a few HTML tags here. Um, so I'm going to hit control B to get rid of that sidebar, hit control plus just to increase the size, make sure you can see it. And we're just going to say H1, we're just going to say something like your content up here would probably be like a sub navigation. If you're making like building out like a, a CMS or a content management system for your project or whatever, your backend, um, you, you might have, uh, you, like your article or something or new article or whatever. Um, and then we're going to have a div with an ID of editor JS. And this part's important. This is where the actual editor will be placed into from editor js.io. And then we're also going to have a button. And I'm just going to say save article. And then that's it. Then we're going to have a script here. We're going to reference um, a JavaScript file. So we're going to say script. We'll use script source equals same directory index.js. All right, so control B once again here 
to get our sidebar, and we'll create an index.js file. All right, so we already installed our editor.js.io, so we're going to have a few imports to make. So we're going to import it first. At import editor.js from editor.js. There we go. All right, now by default, if you just wanted to use editor.js by its default options without having to any import anything else, it comes with a paragraph and also a uh, list, I believe. So you can use paragraphs and lists, like bulleted lists. Um, and if you want to import other things and be able to use, you know, have a more feature rich editor, then if we come out here, well, as you see, we have a configuration setting and it'll show you how to set all this stuff up. But if you click on getting started, actually, and we come down here, we could also see that there's uh, what are described as tools. So uh, they have a, a header, link embeds, raw HTML blocks, uh, images, a checklist, list, embeds, and quotes, and some others, as you can see here. Uh, some of these other ones you will have to import manually. All right, so um, before we do that, though, let's just do it with the default options here. And so we're going to say const editor, if I can type, equals new editor JS. All right, right here. And by default, if we just leave this blank, it's still going to work. All right, and I'm going to use uh, the parcel bundler. You could use Webpack or whatever to, to make sure that our JavaScript all works. Um, so I already have that parcel installed. I have a parcel tutorial that I just released like a month or two ago, and you can um, you know figure out how, how all that works if you want to know more about it. But in this directory, um, and by the way, you can use um, you can install parcel as well through npm. I already have it installed globally, so I'm, I'm going to run uh, parcel serve not server index.html. All right, so it'll take it a second, and it's going to launch this host here. Oh, and that is my bad. We need to come back to our editor. And I, I had a, a spelling mistake here. This should not be capitalized. So there we go. Sorry about that. So now uh, when we come back here, we'll see that it looks blank, but we, we know this was this button was pushed down. So something's here. Um, and this is what the actual editor kind of looks like. Um, there's not much formatting to it at all. Um, but you see if I start typing, and I keep on going on, you know, whatever. I uh, will see that we have some options here to like move blocks up and down. Um, there's not a lot of options as you can see just by default. So let's say for instance, like we want a, a, the, the ability to specify like a heading um, and some other things. So we're gonna come down here and we're gonna do a few other imports. So we're gonna have three other imports actually. So import header from at header JS. And let's do a couple more. Let's say we also want a list. I was wrong. I thought the list came by default, but it doesn't. We have to add that. All right, so we'll just have uh, these three. So an embed, for instance, would work with like YouTube videos and other things. And now we have to actually configure these here in the options here for editor.js. So uh, we're gonna have, first you can specify, by the way, a holder ID. By default, it's already set to editor.js, and this is the ID right here, by the way. All right, so after that, we'll say we have to put in a tools object, and this is where we specify our uh, these, these things right here that we just imported. So what we do is put in a uh, class, and that's not necessarily a CSS class. This is where we define this right here that's being imported. So class header, and then also there's some other options. Um, for instance, uh, inline toolbar. We can add in link, and we'll, I'll show you what this does uh, in a second. But let's just get these all added, these these different different tools. So um, actually, I set that up wrong. We're gonna do a header here. Sorry. I shouldn't record after waking up so early. There we go. So this is how it's supposed to be set up. Um, and then down here, we could do the same thing for our list. So I'm just gonna paste this part in. 
So our list is class list right here. We're importing this. And then we also have an inline toolbar, such as making uh, lists be able to have links and bolds within them. Um, let's also do our embed. And this is just coming straight from the documentation, so there's nothing crazy happening here. Um, so our embed, as you can see, I we have inline toolbar, we set to false, um, config. We can see we have a services, a YouTube, Kube. I'm not exactly sure what that would even be. But you'll see how it works. Um, it's all in the documentation about you know which services you can have in terms of embedding content. Also, while we're down here, um, let's get our button working to actually show how you save this data. So we're gonna say, let's save BTN, we'll call it. Um, we're gonna get it first through document query selector. And we're gonna get our button. And we'll say save btn .add event listener on click function and inside of here we're going to call editor so we have this defined as a constant up here editor dot save then output data and this is coming from the documentation and we'll say uh, console.log. So we're only console logging it. This is where you would want to store it to your database. All right. Um, so we're just going to say article data and output data, just like that. And then of course you can also catch any errors uh, by calling catch here, just like that to the CSS because I, uh, the way it's styled by default with nothing on there, it looks kind of like crap. So um, I'm just putting this, these values here. This is like a light gray background, as you can see, and just setting some certain things here. Of course, my favorite font. Um, we're going to take our editor JS and make the background white. Let's see what things look like so far. Okay. A little bit better. And then we're also going to style our button, which will come into a play in a second. Oh, and by the way, I'm also an idiot. These are the wrong imports from header from list and from embed. Sorry about that. We'll save it now and we'll go back and here we go. So here's how this works. I, uh, we can hit this plus sign and you can see right now we have the option of a header in our list. All right. Which we didn't have before. So we'll, we'll put in header. We'll say my article title, for instance, and then we hit enter and we have our next block. So here we can say by default, it's just going to be a regular paragraph. This is my paragraph text and whatever else. All right. Very cool. Hit enter again. So now we have two blocks and when we uh, click on, you select these blocks, we have this menu right here in which we can either delete it or move it up or down depending on what we want to do. So um, right here, let's say for instance, we want to use that embed function. You're going to see it's not showing up here, but it, the way this that particular tool works is you just paste in something and it will automatically embed. So for instance, if I go to YouTube, go to my channel real quickly and pause me, be quiet. And then we'll come here and we'll just copy this video and paste it. There it goes. It automatically works. So that works because we did import that embed plugin. So we can even enter a caption right here. Hey, yeah, what's up? And we're good to go to keep on writing our editor. So we can also double click here and this is the inline tools. So we have bold, italic and linking and all of that good stuff. Um, we can also insert our list right down here. So lists work very easily. My list here. And there we go. So now um, let's try clicking save and control shift I to get out our console. Oh, editor.saver is not a function. Man, I need to avoid uh, recording tutorials this early. Um, editor.save, there we go. Let's try that again. And of course it just got rid of everything I put. All right, there we go. I just paused and put all that stuff back in so that now we can click save article. And we'll see down here, let me move this um, over so that you can definitely see the data. Um, we'll see that we have our article data and then we have our objects and we have blocks. 
So you can see we definitely have four different blocks. We have one, two, three here, and then four for our unordered list. So the the what it outputs and what you would be saving into your database uh, isn't just HTML, it's this JSON data in the form of this blocks array and this array of objects essentially. Um, and you can see it says type is header, we have data, this is my article title. So it would be up to you uh, to determine how you want to, to work with that data to then go from this, this object here uh, into HTML. So you could do that with PHP, you could do that with JavaScript, uh, with something as simple as like uh, a switch uh, statement where you say, you know, if there's a, um, if, the, if the data is header or the type is header, then you put in your own HTML tags. Um, so the editor js.io doesn't really, isn't concerned with that. It's just the editor itself. So it's up to you to, you know, determine how you want to get this back into HTML. But yeah, that is basically it. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that and you found it useful. If you did, of course, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. Let me know in the comments if perhaps you're going to switch to this editor.js for your content management needs in the future. Let me know. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.